everyone welcome back or welcome here if you're new i am just shawnee and today we're gonna be watching tiktok scary stories let's get into it oh before we do don't forget to subscribe hit that like button and ring that bell so you'll be notified every time i post a video turn up ah. if you've been following me you have noticed that i have lost weight i have slimmed down like 2024 i think well, actually, last year, I decided to make a lifestyle change. And, you know, at the beginning of this year for my New Year's resolution for six months, I didn't eat meat, fried food. Like, I was fasting, the 48-hour fasting. So, I've lost a lot of weight. I've lost, like, 30, 40 pounds since I decided to make this lifestyle change in December. In December, yeah, because it was after Thanksgiving because that's my favorite holiday. So, I've lost 30 pounds and continued to stay the same weight I have been. Like I lost 30 pounds. I started in December, lost the 30 pounds by February. And I've been the same, maintaining the same weight all these months. It's September, as you know, birthday month. And I've been losing weight. I've been, girl, I've been going in, going in. Cause I ain't me. I ain't gonna look like a fat roll sausage on nobody's beach. No, honey, no, honey. So I've been losing more weight this week. Just this week, I've just been, you know, going in on this diet. So I decided to write everything down that I did everything and I put it in a book because you know it's my Nike year and I was like oh let's do that let's lose weight change, make a lifestyle change and make our book so I'm, I'm going ahead and going I'm going to link the book down in the description do yourself a favor and check it out and you know get your summer body before summer's over it's almost over it's over like two days after my birthday so and there's enough time to lose weight like with this book with this diet plan that i made up for myself that works for me i feel like it's gonna work for you i got one it was christmas time and i was at my aunt's house this was december of 2006. my grandpa my aunt's dad he pew pewed himself um years ago when they were little girls. Well, that year in particular, she had found the wedding ring. It had brought a lot of emotions back up to her and she was talking to him. And um, so we were sitting on the couch and she said, Daddy, if you're here, just, just show me a sign. I feel that you're here, just show me a sign. And then out of nowhere, a bell on the Christmas tree started ringing. Well, then, so we we were shocked that that even happened. We're like, maybe that was a fluke, you know, whatever. But then my uncle came home from work that day, and he doesn't believe in all that kind of crap. And he, we were telling him what happened, and he's like, oh, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And, she, and my aunt goes, okay, fine. If you don't believe me, Daddy, do it again. And y'all, I swear, it was like someone put their hand into the Christmas tree to one of the bells and just went ding, 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 ding. And then the whole bell flew off the Christmas tree towards my uncle. You should have seen the look on his face. His face got white as a ghost. And he was like, oh, shit. I was sitting, I was sitting with my back to the Christmas tree, like really close to it. I jumped up. I was like, mm -mm, nope. All right. That's enough for me. And I went home, but that was the one of the times that like, that freaked me out bad. Y'all got any ghost stories? I got more than that, but that was one of the ones that were, that was, it was undeniable. Oh, that must have been her daddy, they daddy. Cause he was just like, okay, okay, foo, D D D. Now let me hit you with it. Not some sense in you, cause here I am, foo. I'm here. I'm here. Don't believe me. Okay, cool. Let me make a believer out of you. Yeah, that that was that was wild, friend. That was have y'all ever experienced anything like that? Comment below. So me and my friends, we are paranormal investigators. We do it for fun. We travel across the country, we go to abandoned places and we explore them and we investigate them. That's what we call it. Now, my grandmother was a very, very prominent person in my life. And um, we shared a love for ghosts and spirits and supernatural things. We just loved it. But after she passed, um, we were 
going to her viewing, I think. And um, my sister told me that before we had left, her and my mom were standing in the kitchen on either side of our island. And a penny fell right behind both of them. And they were the only ones. And the way that it's set up is um, we have a loft. And so it connects to our living room and our kitchen. And there's no way that a penny could have just fallen from where it where it fell from. So I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. You know, maybe it was my mom, but it wasn't 100% positive. It could have been, it could have been a coincidence. So we come back from the viewing and uh, my sister goes into her room and my dad goes into his room and um, me and my best friend are standing on either side of that same island. And um, we uh, were talking about my mom and a penny fell. In the same spot that my sister said that the one before fell. And we thought it was kind of strange. Um, and I picked up the penny and it was on heads. And I picked it up and I looked at the date and it was 1958. And that's the year that my grandmother was born. Now, throughout the past nearly two years since she's passed, there have been multiple incidents where pennies just and coins just fall. And, and out of nowhere, they'll come zipping across the room. And it's just, it kind of freaks people out sometimes, uh, especially when I'm in like small hangouts and a penny falls. I'm like, oh, that's my grandmother. But anyway, as I stated before, me, my friends and I are paranormal investigators. So we go across the country searching for spirits. And in January, we went on a trip to Indiana and we went, investigated the Indiana State Sanatorium. Something happened and there was a very, 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 very dark entity. And um, it nearly possessed, completely possessed my friend. It was definitely this close. Uh, we spent about three hours dealing with whatever this was. We didn't know how to approach it. We didn't know how to go about if we should leave. This was in the middle of a raging snowstorm. We didn't know if we should leave. Our Airbnb was 45 minutes away. We didn't know if we should stay. There were beds there that we could have stayed. We didn't know what to do. So we ended up leaving and we went, we got back to the Airbnb safely, but we were on a paranormal road trip. So we had other locations that we had to hit and that we spent our money on. So the next night we went to this place called Stark Saloon. And whatever it was from the night before followed us. And it started to uh, attack or uh, affect our friend. So we brought him outside. And um, my friend Kaylee, who does not believe in God or Jesus or anything Bible related, she's never read the Bible, she doesn't know anything about uh, Christianity or, ca or Catholicism. All of a sudden, she just starts speaking the Lord's Prayer. Like, it's just flowing out of her. Like, there, it's just is flowing out. And... I've never seen her do that before. And I, and I said, Kaylee, I, I didn't know you knew the Lord's Prayer. And she looked right at me and she said, I don't. I don't know the Lord's Prayer. I don't know how that just happened. And in my head, I'm just thinking, it's my mom. I just knew. I just, something, I just could feel her there. My grandmother, I could just feel her. She was a raging Catholic. She was the hands down, like, Catholicism. And the second I think that, I look down and there's a penny right at my feet. And I go and I pick it up. And the date wasn't anything special, but just the fact that it was there. We were in the middle of the street. There was nobody, there was no cars or anything. It was like two in the morning. The roads were all frozen over, so there was nobody driving. But just the fact that it was there after I felt her presence and after Kaylee just spewed out the Lord's Prayer was really... It makes, it makes you think, but there are plenty more ghost stories that I have and we have, um, I do paranormal investigations. I post those on YouTube. I post clips of those here. So if you're interested in ghosts, definitely follow me. Um, also if you're interested in just exploring abandoned places, this is the place. Um, so if you guys enjoy content like this, I will definitely keep it up and post more ghost stories because I have way more than that. Yo, grandma looking out. Grandma looking out. 
for her. I was not expecting him to say she didn't believe in God. That threw me completely, y'all. Because I was just like, wait, what? Can you believe there's people in the world that don't know God? We need to do our job. We slacking, homie. We slacking. It's unbelievable, though. Like, what? I can't even believe that. It's just like, wait, what? I, I We got some work to do, you guys. We got some work to do. Keep on spreading the Lord's message because, wow, I was not expecting him to say that. That that says a lot right there. That even though you you didn't know God, somebody with you knew God. So you good. That, that says a lot. Like, who you work with, watch who you walk with. What was the... I just read a verse the other day that was just like, when you surround yourself with fools, you're a fool yourself. But when you know that that verse, it just applies right there. It's just like, be careful who you surround yourself with. Because you surround yourself with godly people. You always cover. You good. I love that story. Because it was just like, was it a penny? It was a penny. <sighs> Look how it all related. Because what? Wasn't there something about pennies with the afterlife? Isn't that a thing? I feel like I've heard that. I've heard so many stories now. It's just all these stories in my head. I was watching something the other day and I was just like, yo, I forgot all about that. So yeah, this new knowledge. Love it. Love it. Love that story. And if you love that story and want to hear more stories, go follow him. Go follow all these creators. When I was like 11, maybe like 11, I was living in the projects in Philly and um, my little brother and sister and I, we all was sleeping. We had like bunk beds in the house. So we were sleeping foot to head at times. A lot of times we didn't want to sleep in our own bed or whatever. So we would sleep with each other. This one night, my little brother wanted to sleep with me. We're like six years apart. And um, I remember waking up. It was like uh, probably like five or six in the morning. Something woke me up. I didn't know what it was. Like I had a lot of weird activity as a child. And now as an adult, I look back and I'm like, yo, it was crazy. But anyway, my brother and I, we were sleeping foot to head. And I woke up. It was probably like, like I said, like five in the morning-ish. And I just happened to look outside. So in our backyard was like all cement. It was... um like a regular backyard area but it was it had uh, the frame from where we used to have like swings and stuff back there but the swings aren't there no more you already know how the hood is so um it had that and it had monkey bars and it had this cement like barrel thing that we would go and just sit in sometimes when we were little uh why i wake up like five six in the morning and i look outside and I see these black figures running, like playing in the yard. It looks something like, like they're playing in the playground. And I'm like, what is that? I woke my little brother up. Now, no, I'm like 11, so I woke my little brother up to see if he saw what I saw. He saw exactly what I saw. What's crazy is is. I was like 11 and he was like five in that picture. I mean, in that in that uh, scene, I'm 41 now. And I was just talking to my brother yesterday and he still remembers what we saw. We definitely did see two demons <laughs> running around in the backyard. Playing, might I add. So were they like, they were like short, like kid sized demons, baby, little adolescent demons. It was crazy. 41 where, boo? 41 where? That's what I'm talking oh, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's what I'm talking about. Black don't crack, boo. Black don't crack, honey. Um, so yeah. Um, what were they demons? Where they think? Cause if they was playing on the playground, it makes me almost feel like they were ghosts. You know what I heard the other day? Somebody's perspective of shadow people. What they were saying? They were like, maybe because we live in the three D, we're three D, okay, and the shadows that we cast off are two D. So maybe, just maybe, they're in the four D, and the shadows they're casting that we're seeing is three D. 
and you know with our shadows we can't talk and communicate with our shadows they just do what we do like we're sitting it'll sit like you know what i'm saying but it's you know so that's what they were saying maybe their shadows is the same way they can't communicate with us but we see them in the 3d form but they can't communicate they like you know you know so that's what it could have been that in this situation who knows but the fact that y'all both remember because mm, i would have did something like that i would have woke up my little cousin like look us um you see what i see you see what i'm seeing right because you know five like five you remember i remember five i remember five I remember three. I remember three. I already told you about my story when I was three. Like, I remember stories when I was three when I had that babysitter that would tell her husband to take off his leg and chase me around with that. I don't know if that's just because that was a trauma <laughs> memory, but I remember a lot of instances of my childhood. So, yeah, from well, from three up. I don't, remember, I don't think I remember two down. So, five? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can rely on his opinion and his memory, you know? So, yeah, friend. That's wild. I have a habit of making a short story long, so I will try to condense this as best as possible. Back in 2011, when I was 16 years old, my stepmother's brother died from doing it to himself. I still call her my stepmom. Her and my dad were long divorced at the time, but I've always called her my stepmom, and she still is to this day. So, her brother passes away in 2011, self-inflictedly. And I do remember when she called me and she told me I was actually walking home from the bus stop and I remember just dropping to the sidewalk and bawling my eyes out. This was actually an extreme reaction because even though I knew her brother and spent plenty of time with her brother, I was in no way close with him. I didn't have his phone number. I mean, I'm 16. He's in his 30s. There would be no reason for that in any way, shape or form. We were never close at all. He was always very kind to me. Bought me Christmas gifts with the rest of my siblings, everything like that. Very, very kind man. And then I got a flashback to the last time I ever saw him. We lived in the world's smallest town. Like when I say one stoplight town, I mean one stoplight town, like smallest town. So we're in downtown and I'm sitting in the car waiting while my grandma ran into the bank and I see him. And he looks up at me, smiles and waves because he recognizes me. I don't know what came over me or what kind of fucking shit I was on that day. But I thought that I was being funny and slick by kind of being like, I don't know why. I had no beef with him. I had no beef with his sister. I don't know why I did that. That was the last time I ever saw him. And that replayed in my mind over and over. And I always wondered if I had smiled and waved and talked to him. If maybe he wouldn't have done what he did just a few days later. Not, not like that was the reason he did it. But maybe that act of kindness would have made him rethink it. So for some reason that I still can't explain, I took his passing very, very, very hard. Like I said, I was not close to him, but I took it hard and it devastated me. And I cried and cried and cried and cried. My mother was the type of mother that I could be bleeding out of my eyes and I would still have to go to school. She let me miss school to go to his funeral. I will never forget sitting in that church and watching his mom rock back and forth, screaming at the top of her lungs, my baby, my baby, my baby. I had to get myself back together. Um, anyway, I was bawling my eyes out as well. I took it so hard. And I think it was the manner of how his life ended that was even harder for me. And I just couldn't get over it. I, I was depressed and crying and miserable over this for weeks. And I wasn't even close to him. So one night I have a dream. And he comes to me in my dream. And he says, he's smiling and he's laughing. And I say, and I'm crying in my dream because that's all I did the past few weeks. And I said to him, why are you, why are you so happy? Why are you laughing and giggling and smiling? I said to him, you're dead. Why are you so happy? Why are you smiling? Why are you laughing? And he says, because M, this is what I wanted. I wanted this. I have never been so happy and free in my life. You need to stop crying. You need to get over it. And you need to know I am okay. I am happy. This is what I wanted. Go live your life. Do things you need to do and get over it. I could not be happier where I am. I woke up freaked out as all hell. Totally freaked out. And all day long, that's all I could think about. I couldn't think about anything else other than that dream. And I said, it's one of two things. He actually came to me in a dream and told me this, or it's my mind, you know, dream world, dream life. It's my mind playing tricks on me, whatever. I'm 50-50 on those things, the paranormal and things like that. 
So I'm sitting there thinking about this all day long. I get home from school and turn the TV on. It's on Lifetime. And as soon as I turn this TV on, the segment begins. Do your loved ones come back to you in your dreams to speak to you, to let you know that they're okay? The very day after I had that dream, I woke up and that very day, that's what happened. I turned the TV on. It's Lifetime that opens up to that segment that said, do loved ones come back to you in your dreams to talk to you? I was questioning this all day. I'm sitting in front of the TV like, oh my God, this is back in 2011. This is before streaming services, any of that stuff, okay? I'm sitting in front of the TV like, yeah. And I watch the segment and the segment says, yes, absolutely. Your loved ones do come back to you in your dreams to let you know that they're okay wherever they're at now. And that 100% solidified it for me. Now, he was very, very close with the rest of his family, including my stepmom, his sister. They were best friends. They were insanely close, best friends. I have asked other people in the family, has he ever come to you in your dreams and every single one of them said no never so it was the dream on top of the whole lifetime just so happened to be playing at the right very second that had me fully convinced it was 100 percent him i still question to this day 13 years later why he came to me why he didn't go to any of his other siblings why he didn't go to his mom why he didn't go to his dad why he didn't go to his son his son he came to me i still don't know why to this day it's a 100% true story, and it's a story that I will tell for the rest of my life because that's more than a coincidence. It's the most wild thing that's ever happened to me. I know why he came to you in your dream. I know why. Because you were probably feeling guilty that that was the last interaction that you had with him, and it was clearly eating you up inside. Like, you couldn't even move on. Like, he probably didn't come, go to anybody else that came to you because you were still young that was very impressionable on you he was just like oh oh i gotta fix this I gotta. like she is not handling this well i need to go fix this so yeah that's why he went to you i'm so glad he came to you because what you what it was just that reassurance like hey it's okay it's like you could go and live your life love that he did that for you and um these dreams like you she might have thought that was a coincidence, but we know now. We we know in 2024, there's no such thing as coincidences. What's supposed to happen, what's meant to happen, will happen. Like, point blank period. There's a reason for everything, honey. So, I just watched something. Was it Loey? Loey Lane? Anybody watch Loey Lane on YouTube? You need to go watch Loey Lane on YouTube. She watched, I think she talks about spooky and the glitches in the matrix and stuff. Really good watch. Watched it last night and should have been sleeping, but I got sucked in. And she was follow. She had did some videos about one of these creators that we have watched. We have watched the creator. Y'all remember the creator that was? Um, she was in the house talking on the phone with her boyfriend, and she had fallen asleep. And apparently, was it a Facetime? I think it was a Facetime. It was a Facetime, or yeah, it was a Facetime. And her boyfriend was talking to her. Or she said something to her boyfriend, and it was a ghost that came on the screen and went away. But she was asleep. You know, y'all remember that? Well, she has a lot of stories on TikTok. You need to go follow her. I cannot remember her creator's name. But if you watch the recent Loey Lane, Matri Ghost in the Matrix, you'll see her videos. And she was just going in about how dreams. She had one video about how in a dream, in one of her dreams, she met somebody in real life. Like in real life, the person who was in her dream asked her, hey, what, to, what is today's date? where are you and like um the time and she took that from the dream and went out into the real world and found this person thankfully the creator made a video and the other person who was in her dream found that video and was like yo that was me in your dream like we were real people because the other creator was like yeah i asked you were you a real person you was like yeah i'm a real person like i'm dreaming right now like i'm about to wake up like what you know and they connected on the outside and the other creator who found the creator that we watched told her every detail of the dream that they both had together like yo yo that lets me know that what that dream him coming to her in her dream was not a coincidence these dreams is deeper it's deeper than what we what they led us to think and believe honey next time you dream if you can remember when you're in your dream and you realize that you're dreaming ask somebody turn to somebody and ask them hey what's today's date what time is it 
because they might just be real. Ask them, hey, are you real? They might just be real, but I've also heard, because, you know, we we watch a lot of creators on YouTube because that's how we watch is YouTube, you know, Kaya. And one of her videos was talking about, oh, no, letting people know your dream. They start staring at you. I've never experienced that. I don't think I've, hmm, I might have once experienced. I had this one dream one time where I was somebody else. I had, I had this dream twice. And the first time I had the dream, I was on the sidelines watching somebody else's life. The second time I had the dream, I was that person. And everything that happened the first time when I was on the sideline happened again the second time. But it was from me. Like, it was like. I was that person. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. And once I realized, yo, I was saying to myself in a dream, I was just like, yo, I know this is a dream. I've had this dream before. The moment I made that thought, I didn't say it out loud, but I had that thought in my head. Everybody just started looking at me like I was crazy. I was just like, and then outside, I was like, yo, but I'm your sister. Like it was like a group of sisters. And I was like, yo, I'm your sister though. I'm your sister though. Like I was panicking because I was like, yo, why y'all staring at me? Why are y'all staring? y'all know me y'all know me and it was just like like um I, you're not who we think you are you're not who it was crazy that's that dream has stuck with me but yeah it might be something different let, let me know if you had dreams like that or if you've ever tried to see if somebody's real in your dream like it's in the real because i've seen some people like dream i had last night it was a person i've never seen in my life never seen him like, like on tv like i watched a lot of youtube i was like it's not a creator it's no it's someone i've never seen in my life and you know they say the dreams you have a uh, people in your um in your dreams you've seen and passed and you've seen somewhere i ain't seen that female ever ever because if i did i would have definitely got her number <laughs> you know what I'm saying? so yeah tell me if your crazy experiences with dreams like it was just like oh this dream is real like i'm somebody else or this is like a parallel universe let me know comment below i want to hear your stories and subscribe before you go